Welcome in, guys. It is Brad with Color Sports Cast. Right now, I've got John Hammonds here with me tonight, and we are here to do season three, our debut season three show of the Big Fuss Show. Can I please have your attention? It's all a commotion around here. What are you talking about? Let them yap at you. It's actually very exciting. All right, man. Welcome back. It is Brad with Color Sports Cast. What's up, Hammonds? What's up, man? We had an exciting, exciting week of college football over the weekend. And we had games on Thursday, I believe, right? Didn't we have some yeah. Thursday games? Yeah, we had some Thursday, Thursday Friday, Saturday, yeah. Sunday, and then we had the And we last had the week. one game last night, Monday night. So we've had football the last five days straight. Pretty cool. Um, and we will have pretty- NFL Thursday night. We will. We will. We'll have oh, some sure. NFL. Sure. And soon, it won't be long. I don't even know. They might kick off this week. I don't think so. But I'd say next week, we'll start having some of those, like, Tuesday and Wednesday night games pretty soon. Yeah, they're, they're – it ain't far off. Yeah, pretty soon we will. So, football every night of the week. <laughs> And then you go from football, and then you have basketball gets in t- between it. And then, you right. get, then usually we have everybody screwed up because we we talk basketball and football during that time, and everybody's yeah. Like, there's well, a time. You- there's a time where we talk both of them, both of them. Yep. Yeah, it gets a little confusing. All right. So if you are following us on Facebook, please help support us by sending stars or sub- subscribe to our page for ninety nine cents a month. Either one of those. The deal of the century, my man. Hey, you can't get nothing for 99 cents anymore. I mean, I mean, I don't even think you can pick up. I don't even think you can pick up Q-tips for 99 cents. So, I mean, (laughs) you can't, you can't get nothing for 99 cents, but anyways, help support us. If you're on Facebook, if you're on YouTube, we appreciate you as well. And we are also on WSBN TV and we're on the Real Fresh channel as well. So uh, all of those things we are on now. So we appreciate everyone of uh, that helps support us and puts us on. Right. So I was going to bring this up. Uh, I don't know if you wanted to do it, but I was wanting to do something every week, um, usually every Tuesday. I was going to do like superlatives, like like guys that had great weekends. And whatnot, my top, my top three people, or my top three players. Um, we don't have start this week, but um, I would okay. like to. I've well, like to I mean, segment. I've got, I've got like Heisman worthy performances is what I've named it down at the bottom. So, well, um, I mean, we, if you're if you're yeah. looking at that, um, we which, might, we might, we might get to that. Is what I'm saying. We'll, we'll get into that whenever. Yeah. All right, so we are College Sportscast. This is the Big Fuss Show, week two, season three. Um, You can see that we are on the Real Fresh channel on WSBN TV channel 30. That means you can find us on your Roku, Apple, or Fire TV as well. Are some of our sponsors there, Home Field Apparel, uh, True Victory, and we do have Amazon on GreenvilleSportsMedia.com. So that is scrolling there on the bottom. All right. So, opening weekend, week one in college football. That's going to be on the bottom down there as we kind of go through some of this. And I don't know exactly where you think you want to begin, but this is where I wanted to begin. So, it seemed like that the football gods – was frowning on those that are suing their own conference this past week or from week zero through week one. And I'm not saying that that's going to continue, but when you are trying to sabotage your own home, basically Clemson has been in that conference since like 1951. Mm -hmm. Um, FSU since 1991, I believe, is when they joined the ACC. They were an independent for a long time before that. But when you are trying to 
sabotage your own home. And I say that kind of in the way that the Pac-12 was destroyed. It's kind of like Clemson and FSU is trying to destroy the ACC. Now, I'm getting to say all that because I wanted to give you a couple of stats. Through week one, the teams that are suing the ACC are 0 and 3. The rest of the conference, John, is 15 and 2. Yeah. 15 and 2. The rest of the ACC outside of Florida State and Clemson went 15 and 2 in conference play. Um, you know, that's pretty damn good if you ask me, John. 15 mm -hmm. and, and I'm going <clears> to <throat> probably um go in on since we're talking about FSU this weekend, you know, last year they had, you know, the record where they was 12 and 0, 13 and 0. Um, Jordan, thank Jordan, you, Bill. Appreciate Jordan, it. Jordan Travis goes down, and it ain't been the same since. Um, you know, they brought in DJU, um, but you know, they brought in some key guys from the from Georgia. Um, they brought in some you know, transfer guys, and it's just not clicked. I mean, you know, the game against Georgia Tech, um, the, the game last night, they just looked out of sync. The defense was just giving up really big plays to, to uh, an improved Boston College team coached by Bill O'Brien. And, you know, let's not take nothing away from Boston College because I think Bill O'Brien is going to turn that program around. He's going to get them back to the right track. But you got to be – do you got to be concerned, Brad? I asked this question. Do you have to be concerned after the first two games if you're a fan of FSU and seeing what um, Norvell is, is kind of – I mean, of course you've got to be concerned. I mean, hello. I mean, I, you know, if you're a fan, you got to be concerned. There's just no other way around it. Now, Clemson fans – I'm just going to say it's a blimp in the road and, and they're going to start kicking butt next week and, and everything else. Um, so far, I mean, we'll see how their road goes. Uh, but FSU definitely after last night at home as a 16 and a half or 17 point favorite at home to get beat 28 to 13. That's that's pretty bad. I mean, if you're not well, concerned you even, yet, you even, you even called me and you said, "Is FSU down twenty-one to six? Like you couldn't yeah, believe man, it. I, it was like, I was like, busy and didn't get in till about uh, halftime or a little bit after halftime or something. And I was like, "Holy cow!" I I called John. I was like, "Is this real?" So, hey, I'm not sure if he's just Jason. Are you here? Man, I am trying to get my camera together, man. Okay, man. I, I, I'll i wait. I just didn't know if you were down there or not. I'll pull you up in a minute. Man, we good. We good. We'll figure well, it out. And, and I'm going to say this, too, you know, Brad, on the whole Clemson thing, because I was going to kind of go back to the there Clemson. Like, you know, they didn't really have any offensive identity, you know, and, and that's going to happen when you got a team like Georgia. It's got a really formidable defense um, and whatnot. But, but Cade Klubnick, to me, I don't know how to describe this kid. Like, Yeah, but wait a yeah. second. When When is it going to be not the quarterback and the system? Because, I mean, you're talking about DJ. DJ was a top-rated five-star, and it's he's not been the same. Well, Klubnick, Klubnick was a top-rated five-star. And he's not been fantastic. He's not, but and really the only player that played really that done had much production was their um, receiver Antonio Williams. He had six catches for seventy six yards. Other than that, the passing game was really not happening. Bill says um, what's concerning for SS FSU is they got blown off the line on both sides of the ball by both teams that they have played. 
Well, and that is true. And to and to mark off on my Clemson deal here, Phil Moffa didn't have a great game either. You know, there was four right. for thirteen on third downs, and I'm going to say this. The Clemson's probably not going to face a defense probably as good as Georgia's again the entire year. Let's just get that out there. Georgia hey. is on Georgia's on another level. So I don't know if Monica's still on here. She said go dogs, but you gotta give a you gotta give a shout out to them, honestly, guys. So um they are they have won 40 in a row regular season games. And they have won 46 in a row college football games that were not coached by Nick Saban. Okay. The only person in the last 46 games that has beat them, the only team, the only coach is Nick Saban. So, I mean, the Dern Bulldogs are, Georgia Bulldogs are just tearing up everybody. I mean, I don't care who they are outside of Alabama and Nick Saban. Jason, you're muted. You're either muted or I can't hear you. Can you hear me now? There you go. I got you now. Did, did, did I hear you guys talking about Florida State? Yeah, we're, we open it up talking about the Florida State and the Clemson game both. Kind of, I kind of strung them together. Well, man, let me let me let me chime in and ruffle some feathers. Florida State will be calling my guy Sanders when the season is over with. Guarantee, I guarantee that. Because for one thing, man, you. If you got as many defensive tackles and defensive linemen who look like NFL players who are getting manhandled at the line, something is wrong. And two I mean, games, I, I agree with you 100%, and I think everybody across the country would agree with you on that. I mean, man, you know. You losing the game like, in the trenches. You got, and, you know, Jason, you got – and the thing is, you got three or four of those guys that are probably projected to be in the top 40 in the NFL – and they're getting manhandled by Boston College. Yeah, well, but I'm going to be honest with you. If they keep looking like they are, they're not going to keep being in the top five or ten. And, I mean, uh, you know, you, you can't play football and look that bad getting blown up every time. And I mean, that's up. true. That's true. But but let's not forget. Let's not let's – let's give uh, uh, Coach uh, Boston College, man, a lot – a lot of we are. I'm games. I'm going to get to him. I have okay, him okay, down okay. here a little further. Gotcha. For Boston Clemson? College, yeah, now, Clemson, man, listen, Clemson didn't get nobody in the portal. He better adjust to the way of the world now. See, uh, here's or, or, or I'm going to give my take on Clemson real quick. If Dabo Sweeney does not figure out how to connect freshman kids and portal kids together and have a mixture of both, he's going to get left behind. He's already he's he's already, he's, he's already he, left. I'm already. not I'm not saying I'm not saying, but he's still winning games in conference. I'm saying I'm talking when he's when he's doing like up against the Georgias and these other teams. Like I mean, let's be honest, he's already left behind. I mean, it's this is this is at changed. least his second or third year that he's been behind. I, I get the way he wants to recruit. He, he recruits the old school way, the old style, but. You got to change with the times. You got to adapt well, with the times. John, the problem with that is, is that you are losing some players to the transfer portal along the way. So you bring in your high school kids and you bring in your twenty-five. Now you try to get thirty, whatever. You bring in your high school high school kids, okay? And he and he recruits great there, but the problem is is that over time, over a couple of years, you lose 10, 14 kids every year, and you're not picking up the talent back that you're losing out of the portal. That's the problem. That's true. So That's true. what happens is, is that your overall talent level goes down a little bit for your team. I'm not saying that you don't still have five-star four 
high five star kids there. It's yeah. just the overall is lower than what it used to be. And this well, has been going on for at least three years. Well, you look at how, you know, Mark Stoops does things, how Josh Heupel does things, all these other coaches. And it just makes you wonder what's, you know, and, and he's not even getting on board with the whole NIL stuff. And, and that's another problem in itself. Um, that I agree with, Bill. Um, and Bill's got a good point. Yeah, um, I agree with that as well, Bill. Losing Venables was a big deal, I thought. It was. It, it, it has been. I mean, since he's been gone, they haven't been quite the same, to be quite honest. But that does make a difference, Bill. I will agree. But it's been the offense. They just don't have the playmakers. They, well, the, the thing is, I, me and Dad was talking about this Saturday. They don't have those guys like DeAndre Hopkins. They don't have spilt well. If you if you be fair, I, I could consider Moffa a spiller type. Moffa's a really good running back. Moffa, is. Mo- Moffa's the only one I that I well, see. Well, Antonio Antonio Williams is really good, and they got Brian Stuck. Is it Brian Stool? I think they're tied in. He's really good. Um, there's some weapons there, but they just don't have those guys that just can go make a play. The DeAndre I mean, they had Hopkins. 188 yards. I know it was Georgia, and Georgia's Miami. got a defense, but 188 yards is just not going to get it done. Well, and and I was just saying, you know, you don't have DeAndre Hopkins. You don't have a Sammy Watkins out there. Like, you don't have one of those guys that can just go make a play. And you've seen that on Saturday. They just, they just you know, Georgia just pinned their ears back and they just made them go down the field and they just could not do it. And the quarterback play was, was brutal. We're going to move on to some other stuff here. But before we do – Kind of to tie into my thing here at the bottom. I mean, honestly, I feel like it was kind of just a weekend, a week of ten days of we're gonna we're gonna show the that these teams that the ACC can still be something even without them. And I mean, going fifteen and two without Florida and 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 Clemson. I mean, Florida State and Clemson in the ACC shows the world that they could be legit without them, to be honest with you. So kudos to the rest of the ACC for standing tall and playing some ball, just to be honest. All right, let's move on to Billy Napier and the Florida Gators. All right. I mean, we got to talk about this stuff, guys. I mean, Jason, I'll let you go. You ain't been on with us. This is Jason Harrison. Glad to have you back, man. He's going to try to join us on Tuesday nights here at College Sportscast. The former Ole Miss player, got to throw that in, basketball. But he's a huge sports fan and has a lot of – knows a lot of people, and we love having Jason on the show. So, there you go. I gave you your dues. <laughs> um, <laughs> appreciate that. Appreciate that. But uh, yeah, it, it's when, when when I seen the the the, the uh, heading down and Billy Napier, I was like, oof. I feel yeah. sorry for him as well. It's man, it's just not the the state of Florida. Besides Miami, is in real trouble. Um, I think that man, he has to win some games coming up because he has a brutal, brutal. November, if I'm not mistaken, is it November? Uh, it's, it's probably his last five. Yeah, it's games. it's it's the last. Man. It's the end of the season. Yeah, yeah. He has a brutal a home stretch, and man, he he has to realize some wins. Or like they said on, on on college game day, they're gonna end up. Man, he's gonna be getting paid to play golf, and that's just the nature of the business, man. I think that um, man, it, it's it's a shame that we look at historic programs that um that are falling by the wayside, and you see the Boston Colleges, the Georgia Techs, the, the Louisville, the new, the team that probably who have uh, um, been recruiting and now are seeing the fruits of their labor, their their teams are older, much more mature, and you're going to see a lot of those. And, uh, man, it's, it's it's something else, man. It's something else. Man. I, I feel bad for uh neighbor down there. But 
The SEC is going to be brutal. <laughs> He's messing with you. Bill's messing with you down there. You see it, Jason? <laughs> I see him. I see him. Well, let's, let's let's leave Ole Miss alone, man. Look, I'm not gonna say nothing about them just yet. <laughs> He's messing with you down there. All right, Jason I I and Hammonds. I got it. I got. I got to bring this up since we're talking about Napier. Did either of y'all watch any of the post game press conference with Billy? I Napier? did. I watched it. It was. I'm gonna tell you right now. It was. De- Depressing. God, it was depressing. He couldn't open a water bottle or something like that, right? Well, well, yeah, that's <laughs> what he, they're saying. He kinda, yeah. And he made a comment, I think it was the day after, and he said that if we could focus on football and not what somebody in rural Florida in their mom's basement says, then we can get on a better track. Like, But that comment alone tells me that the pressure to me is getting to him. Man. Fresh, Man. what do you what do you got going on over there? <laughs> and I'm going to say this too, Jason. And you know, I've watched Florida since I was a kid. I mean, I remember the Danny Werfel days, the Jacquez Green days, the the, the Rydell Anthony's, the 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 Ike Hilliards, Fred Taylor, um, Emmett Smith. Y'all Emmett don't remember. Smith. Y'all don't you no. Hammonds, you don't remember Emmett Smith at, at Florida, but I do. Emmett Smith, you know, Terry Dean. They had a quarterback named Terry Dean at one time. Yeah. Um, you know, Eric Rett, former Tampa Bay Buck. Yeah. Um, I say that to say this. What happened on Saturday should not be happening in the swamp. Um I'm embarrassing. In- it was embarrassing. Um, it was, you know, I, I talk about this all the time. Jason knows this song. We walk in your trap and we take your trap. And, that, and that's what Miami pretty much did, you know. To go well, in trap. I mean, to beat, it, to beat it all, guys. I mean, you got players posting that on, you know, I mean, posting the finger on – you know, yeah. Instagram and there's, social there's, media there's, there's after culture, the game. There's a culture, there's a culture problem. At I mean, Florida. that's it's on top cool. of it all. When you got players doing that, posting that for everybody to see, there's an even bigger issue, okay, when you got that happening. Here's where I think, and Jason's probably kind of back up on this one. Here's where I think Billy Napier went wrong, and, and I don't know if Bill Sizemore's still on, but when he didn't hire his uh, offensive coordinator, um, his own offensive court, he does the, he calls the plays himself. Yeah. Um, I, I think he's that's going to be the demise of him. Um, in, in, in my opinion, because um, ETA on his departure. Honestly, it, it's, it's 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 very quick, and, and I wouldn't be shocked if it's very soon. Um. I'll be honest with you, you know, they're probably going to beat Sanford Saturday. They're probably going to take care of Vince there. But, you know, they, they play UCLA After that, coming up. They play, they play Tennessee. They go to Texas A&M. They play, no, they play at home against Texas A&M. Oh, okay. Well, swamp. Texas A&M is um, at the Swamp. That's the next then one. They, then they play Kentucky at home. I think they play Tennessee on the road. Um, so, and there's some tough games down that stretch. Ole Miss. Um, Texas, then they play yep. Florida State, which you know now we're probably talking about not even a big game anymore. Like it was that's going to be the that's going to be the dirt that's going to be the dirt bowl in Florida or something. Man. I'm I'm not sure Who what that was going to be. Who would have thought this? Think about this: that in the state of Florida, in the last, even though Miami's had had their Little, Miami's uh, not been great for 20 years. Let's be honest. Been, let's not be honest. But let's 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 not it's not great. But who would have thought this year that Miami yeah. would be taking over the, the state of Florida? Well, I mean, it's one game. Let's well, let's hold, let's I, I hold the phone on that just yet. But I get that, but you don't lose to Georgia Tech. Which Georgia Tech's I mean, hell UCF might be boss down there. 
I don't know. Hey, I'm hey, saying they, they, they get Arkansas. They got they got a quarterback. They got a winner. I, I'm, I'm I'm just saying they might be boss down there. I don't know. We'll find out. All right. So with that said, I talked about a couple of negatives from this week. Let's get to some positives from week one here. Opening hot topics here. Let's get to some positives. I got three teams listed there that I think made a excellent, excellent, not only showing, but improvement. Um, I thought the Vanderbilt game last Thursday was the game of the weekend. Now, um, you know, the Boston College thing happened last night, so maybe it changes a little bit there. But take your pick, and you can go through and talk about all three quickly. But take your pick. I got three teams there that's some positive for week one, and just uh, do a little talk about it. Uh, I like the way Vandy, you know, even when they got behind, they, they got back in it and they sent it to overtime and they and they eventually won. Um, partly he's a really good coach. Um, I think, you know, what he's doing there is, is pretty remarkable, even though that they've not had the success that they've wanted. He, he's bringing a lot of toughness to that team. And I think they're a lot more tougher this year than, than they have been the last two or three years. And, and I really like that. And, and to go to, on to Georgia Tech, I think, you know, you identify with your coach, um, Brent Key. And that team um, definitely got, does. He's got 16 offensive linemen on his staff, yep. um, which is a major thing. And, and they, they do a lot of pound, round pound. Then they throw the ball some, but they do a lot of, uh, yeah, but they're pretty nasty on that line. They're pretty nasty up front. They dominated Florida State yep. last year, last week at the line of scrimmage. Um, they won this week. I think it was who was it? Georgia State, maybe. I think. Yeah, they won. They won this week as well. It'll be uh, Georgia smaller, State and then Boston College. Um, yeah. Castellanos, the the quarterback, he he played really well. Um, a lot of guys played well. I'm going to tell you something. Um, Bill O'Brien, guys, O'Brien. first game, first game. first game. Now, I want to tell you a little stat here, John. First game, it was the largest deficit win on the road ever in a defeat winning against a top-10 team for Boston College. Well, and, and to, to beat it all. Ever. In his first game. And to beat it all, he goes to the Doak and, and beats Florida State, which I'm not saying – On the Florida, road. I'm yeah. not saying Florida State's a world beater. I'm saying – but to, to go on the road and, and beat a team like Florida State in your first season, like, it's a big deal. First game. Not first season, first game. Well, first game, yeah. I mean, that's insane. What he did last night, the way they looked and and coming in and, and controlling the line and the big uglies and doing all the stuff that they did to Florida State, does Florida in does Florida Tallahassee? State, does Florida State even know how to cover a wheel route? Because that's what they was getting burned on a lot last night. Yeah, wheel routes. All right, Jason, what do you say? I got these three teams up. I think these are the three um, highlights. You know, the underdogs that that done something great. I think these are the three teams of the week. Um, so I had them up here for you guys. Can you hear me? You guys can hear me. I can. Okay. Oh, uh, Vanderbilt. I was. Uh, I was utterly. I was happy. SEC team uh, hadn't won in a while, but to me, Boston College to me is a little bit more of a shocker than each, each and every one of them because, like you said, he he got the job what six seven months ago and yeah. no recruit. This is his f- first yeah, game. His yeah. first game, but yeah. but like I said, like I was saying earlier, a lot of these colleges. Uh, a lot of these teams are already mature because they didn't have a whole bunch of people who were going to the drafts or transferring out. And, you know, when you, you come in with a lot of NFL pedigree, man, right. a lot of these athletes are waiting for that toolless. They're waiting he's for been, that. He's been, under state. he's been under SAB in the last few years. Bill he's been under SAB. Has. He, knows, yeah. he knows the area. He's from the area. So it means a lot more. And I think and I'm, I'm, I'm going to go out on him and say this. If he continues to win his Boston College, I can see another power five coming in trying to offer him some money to get him about it too. 
because he comes with I think, knowledge. I think he'll get another chance. Yeah, he for will. A bigger, he will. For a he big comes with knowledge. Yeah. You know? well, I mean, you so, got to remember, he was at Penn State, too, at one point. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. So he That's what I'm saying. Shot. He'll get another chance at a big-time program if he can continue to look like that at Boston College. And also, like the commentator said, with all of them coming from the uh, NFL, they were used to talking on the mic. Yeah, to the to the kids, you know what I'm saying. Yep. So that's a huge advantage this year, being able to talk to your quarterback in his head, inside his helmet, and uh, tell yeah, him what's going on. I mean, you know what Brock Vandergriff said when when somebody I heard this the other day and I thought it was funny. So somebody asked him what you know how it was going and what he thought of the new um, mics in the ear for the quarterbacks and stuff, and he said it's about time I had that in high school. Man, state of Texas. <laughs> Listen here, he, you he was in. State of Texas, he, yeah. He's in a big time program in Georgia, and he said, "I he said I had that in high school." <laughs> man, man, I mean, he just adapted. That's how far man. behind the college yeah. game is, by the way. Yeah, so. I mean, yeah. but hey, yeah. hey, listen, uh, they've been paying in high school too. So yeah. the college game, just, yeah. hey, college game is just not legally doing it. So I know, but you know, I, I just thought it was funny the way he's like, I had it. In I mean, high you, school. You're right. You're absolutely right. You're absolutely right. <laughs> yeah. 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 So anyways. All right. So for me, I really love the Vanderbilt win. Like I think um, them coming in as a 13 and a half point underdog on their own home field and pulling that off against Virginia Tech, who was probably projected in the same line as Georgia Tech and Boston College and stuff out of in the ACC, like, they were supposed Pat to be McAfee, you know a little better too. Pat, Pat McAfee had him in the top four of the ACC, like yeah, yeah. I mean, so you know that was a big win. Of course, anytime you can go and beat FSU and both Georgia Tech and Boston College have both beat FSU in the last week, 10 days. Um, you know, so both of those teams, top 10 wins, um, you know, it's just – it's huge uh, for those programs. And congratulations to the Doors, the Yellow Jackets, and the Eagles. Absolutely. Big wins for all of you. So, all right. Then we're going to get back on a little bit of a bad here for the week. So, LSU and Texas A&M, where do you start? Where do you start with both of them? Uh, How many times well, is LSU going to win opening game? Well, yeah. <laughs> I'll, be honest with you. I'll be honest with you, Brett. Like, Garrett Nussmeyer, I felt like he showed a lot of confidence um, against USC. Um, but they have a lot to clean up. Um, you know, there was so many undisciplined penalties. They had some missed opportunities that they had a blown lead. Um, they gave up 14 points in the, in the final six minutes, which they, they ended up having their coach slam the table after the game. He was really upset. Um, he was really upset in the post game over, over why they can't finish. Um, you know, I, I don't think it's too far fetched to say this team is in trouble. But it's very disappointing um, to see an LSU team continue to keep doing the same thing over and over every single year. You know, they've lost the th last three years right out of the gate in the season opener. And I feel like they're they're, li they're living off that Alabama win, um, in my opinion. No, I mean, that, that's just me. That's a, that's a good take, Bill, on Bill O'Brien and, and FSU. And I think, you know, with LSU, it's just going to take some time. And I think Brian Kelly will do a really good job for them. I just think they need to do better at um, starting out fast because it's, it's not a good sign when you lose three straight years in a row um, right out of the gate. And then you go to Texas A&M. Man, quarterback play was atrocious. You know, they could never get an offensive rhythm. Um, you know, it seemed like it was more of the same. Well, and yeah, and, and and Notre Dame's defense played really good. The bigger concern was the quarterback play to me, Connor Wigman. Wigman, he was five of sixteen, Brad, for sixty-one yards, and threw two I, interceptions on throws of five or more yards. And is that that ain't gonna cut it? No, no, no. 
all. I mean, no, that's not going to cut it anywhere, really. There, so. there comes a point where you're going to have to make a decision. And I'm not saying to, to bench him after, you know, the first game of the year. But there has to come a point where you think, you know, if this continues and you continue to play like this, you might want to look at the bench. Well, I'll say this, guys. I'll say this. And speaking from experience a little bit, it was just week one. Now, we can – we can uh, jump off ships and, 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 you know, jump off certain bandwagons real quick. But we got to remember, somebody was going to look bad. You know, uh, I think LSU could have easily won that game with a couple more completions. They could, But it is three won. in a row opening well, games. I mean, what, that, did, you, what, 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 what did he do? What did he do? He, he, he slammed his hand down. Yeah. Like, at the end of the day, man, you, you got to understand that. It's a t- – I always say this, and you guys are sports guys as well. If you get me to the last three minutes of a game, I can win it. Meaning the coach has got to win the game. If it's getting if it's getting down to the last final minutes of a game in any sport, a coach has to win that game. Well, he has to, he has to rally his troops and get them on the same page and tell us to finish. If you know you hadn't finished for the last couple of years, that should be a point of emphasis. Going into the fourth quarter, a hundred percent, You said a hundred percent. So, and just like Texas A and M, Texas A and M, they still could have won the game. But then I see the coach, hey, run the ball. I mean, you got to know, hey, all we stop throwing the ball, run the ball, run like, the damn ball, especially when your quarterback is struggling. Especially when your quarter, and it's not like yeah. they don't have studs. Oh, and I it's say, listen, like well, Brian Kelly too. I do like the fact that he's very um, enthusiastic, enthusiastic. I like that he's wanting to get better, but until you get better, you got to prove it. Like um, you, you got to get out there and you know show it on the field. And in the last three years, he's not done it. And you know, not to take away from Notre Dame because Notre Dame played really well. You know, they they played really good defensively. Um, I thought Riley Leonard played really good at times. Um, there was a couple of plays where it could have went either way, but for Notre Dame to go into a raucous environment like they did with the 12th man at, at Texas A&M and win that game, that, that says a lot about this Notre Dame team and and their future schedule because their schedule is winnable to to the point. I actually they- I actually put them in my um, college football playoff top 12 this week. This was, uh, this, was, this was the game that Notre Dame I thought they could kind of slip up on, but with winning this one. There's a good chance that they could they could go undefeated. Like yeah, yeah. Because like I said, USC to me was wasn't that much better. I think they made more plays, but Notre Dame obviously is a tougher team. Miller yeah, Moss, Miller Moss yeah. made more plays. I thought he he, right. he, made, he right. made plays when it when it mattered. All right, let's get okay. to another one. I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to I'm gonna try to run through some of these. So I got a few more here. All right, we got to get to Alabama and. Kellen De- Kalen DeBoer's debut. Try to say that like three times real fast, by the way. Um, as the Alabama head coach after Nick Saban. And man, guys, they don't look like they missed a beat. I don't think I don't think you can judge them right now. I mean, they didn't play anybody. You know, well, Alabama, I mean, they, yeah. When we, they played, we judged them. they played somebody, they played people that's better than like Ole Miss. Honestly, I mean, uh, come on I'm now. Talk, I'm talking about, I'm talking about their, their first game. Who did they play? Jacksonville State. They played. They played Western Kentucky. Which <laughs> they is, played Western Kentucky. That's yeah. that's kind of like me saying you really can't judge them based on that because they struggled early and then caught a rhythm. You can only judge. I mean, he had a great show in his first game, but when he gets into the SEC. That's I mean, I agree with know. you, but putting up yeah. 63 points in your first outing. Oh, Miss put up 70, and I'm not going to say one more word about them again. Yeah. Because it's just, it's who you pay someone to take a loss. But you pay them a half a million to come in here. But, Jason, <laughs> I'm really talking more about the culture at Alabama. Well, you got to understand that, you know, that's, that's kind of like if. Kirby I don't Smart think left Georgia right even now. even Georgia though Saban is off. left, I don't think off. that they have missed a beat. I don't. It's a standard. No, it's it's still a standard. 
still a stand. I'm not talking about just the game, the culture, the attitude, the way they come in, the way they present themselves. Like it doesn't look like they have missed a beat. Did, did you expect them to miss it? Did you did you thought it was gonna be a little a little a follow? little bit, yes. With, with losing Saban, yeah, honestly, yes, a little. Because I mean, the coach they brought in, he came from a winning, he was a winner anyway. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, so but you're talking like, about probably the greatest coach or one of the greatest coaches ever in college football. Well, let's let, let me bag up. Hold on. I'm glad you said that because Nick Saban has had great assistant coaches throughout yeah. his tenure too. He has. He has great. He has a he had a great coach staff. He has a hell of a tree now. So it just can't all Nick Saban is gonna get all the credit. But those assistant coaches, the ones who were crew, the ones who was look at Kirby Smart. There's no reason why he went to Georgia in one or two years. He knew the blueprint because he was the ones doing it. He was the one. You know what I'm saying? So Alabama just has I, I, I had that tradition for so long, you know, and, and when they don't, it's kind of like Kentucky basketball. You expect them to win every year, and when they don't, it's a problem. You see what I'm saying? They have that type of – But Alabama fell off once. I remember the 90s. Oh, yeah, yes. Yeah. Early all 90s, I'm saying, you're right. All you're I'm right. saying, Early 90s. they fell off once. I remember the 90s. Yeah, yeah, they did, but you're, you're, you're expecting you, – your expectations are high. Oh, but, and like, another, he did well, have a – I wanted to kind of touch on a little bit about Alabama. Um, Saturday was Ryan Williams a little bit, uh, the wide receiver for Alabama. Um, This kid is a freshman in college, and he should be a senior in high school right now. Yeah, look, I I don't know what these young men are thinking now. These young men are just remarkable. They do the same thing in bad. They are, but like you said, go ahead. I'm gonna let you finish the point. Go ahead. Oh, I'm just gonna say, and you asked Brad like. The kids built like a tank, and yeah. And, yeah. and I mean this this kid's the real deal. Like he's and Jalen Milrow played really well, and T.J. Finley better know better than to open his mouth next time because he he inserted foot to mouth. I think T.J. Finley's done playing against Alabama. <laughs> thank, <laughs> thank goodness. Some of those comments he's been made. on tour, right. He's been on tour every yeah. school he's played against. Yeah, but yeah. These yeah. these kids are just. <laughs> Man, the, and you got to look look, look look across the board, uh, John. It's a lot of wide receiver freshmen that are that are coming in highly talented. They are, man. man. I mean, there's some good ones. Should be a senior in high school right now. And yeah, decided, it's... you know what? Let's get it started. And yep. I love it. I love it. You know, let's get to the money soon. That's what I say. What are we waiting on to cash this lottery ticket? Let's get to the money. Open up the right. bank. All right. Got to get to your Ole Miss Rebels, Jason. You're here with us. Got to get to them. Uh, you know, they they ran up the score on Furman. Furman is a good FS, FCS team. Um, I'm not going to say that they are not. They are in the top 10 almost every single year in the FCS. They are a good FCS team. So, but the uh, the the Rebels, man, I mean, they have a lot of talent, Jason. And I mean, there's a lot, and there's a lot of uh, expectations. So I, mean, I, I just, I just wanted to get your thoughts real quick. Uh, first game, Furman. Uh, I really, like I said, I and I and I almost went to the game. I almost went to the game, but I knew I had a birthday party. My twins turned uh, ten yesterday, and so I had a birthday party that Sunday, and I did not want to do that to myself. Well, happy uh, birthday to the twins. Because I, I know I know what I would have been doing in Oxford. Oof. But yeah. <laughs> nevertheless, yes. <laughs> Top 10 program, a lot of expectations. I'm not going to just boast and brag on them. They did what everybody thought they was going to supposed to do. Yeah. I just want to well, see I mean, them against a, a better team. When you roll up team. when you roll up 772 total yards, I mean. You ain't got much to complain about. Like it's That's what I'm saying. It's like I that, they, yeah, I mean, they absolutely. get a standing ovation. I Jason was gonna be on with us, so I had to throw him in and get <laughs> a little bit of a little bit of you know commentary about about him a little bit down there. So but no, um, like I say, I can't wait to see yeah. them when they play somebody. I, you know, I think the game it's two games I ask when I need to go. I, it's either gonna be Georgia or Oklahoma where I go down yeah. there. Right. And I'm gonna go because they're home. 
Yeah, I mean, they they have a atrocious home game schedule this year. Like it might be the worst ever. You know, <laughs> nothing. Oh my goodness. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Ole yeah, Miss, no. Ole Miss schedule actually sets up pretty nicely for them it with does. the talent they have. But they got Georgia coming in town, so yeah, that's one I might just I might just sneak down to Oxford and, and, and do that. You know, I, I might have for to the SEC. I think Ole Miss's schedule sets up pretty nicely for them with the talent that they have yeah. this year. Yeah. So yeah. we'll see. We definitely will see. All right, Hammonds. I'm going to throw this one to you first. You can pick which one you want to talk about, or you can talk about both. But these are two teams that got some big wins over LSU and Texas A&M. Just wanted to get a, give a little bit of love to them as we go through this. Um. I really like the way Miller Moss handled himself, um, you know, down the stretch. I thought the defense was very improved. Um, you know, it was worlds better than a year ago. Um, you know, it's only one game. I will, like Jason always says, it's one game. But I feel like there's a lot of promise around this USC team, um, which, you know, given – Caleb Williams went to the draft. Many thought maybe, hey, they might have a down year. But, you know, they look ready to play with just about anybody, I think, offensively. Um, defense look, is what impressed me, holding LSU like, to 20. You know, with their defense, there's still a long way to go. There's games down the line. But that's probably a first good impression as any. Um, and that's probably his first big, I feel like, signature win, Riley, since he's been there, um, right out of the gate. And, yeah. you know, this USC team, I think, can play with just about anybody. If Miller Moss can continue to play the way he did down the stretch and the defense can get um, better and better, especially, you know, according to last year, you know, the defense wasn't that great. They gave up a lot of plays. They've been but, terrible the last two years. But Pitiful, Sunday, they, Sunday they looked really crisp. They, they tackled better. They've done so many great things better. I think this USC team is a – as a team to watch. All right, Jason, what about Notre Dame and the Fighting Irish here? I mean, going into Kyle Field and coming away with a win is never an easy task. No, it never is. Uh, but if, if <laughs> two things, if you have a quarterback who got some moxie about him and yeah. you can control the line of scrimmage, you got a chance. You know, yeah. they just made more plays in the fourth quarter. Uh down the stretch and, and took the game. And like John said, they walked into a hostile environment. The 12th man was rocking, but, you know, they were very quiet on Notre Dame's last drives. You know, they went down there, executed, then got stops. You know, you can tell that uh, Texas a and was really one-dimensional, especially when they was forced to throw the ball. Uh, the DBs for Notre Dame were, were, were like on them, like jam on, on peanut butter. You know, they were just sticking to them. Well, here's, the th- here's the thing I tell people, though, Jason, is when you get in that kind of situation and, and you can't run the ball and then you have to throw with how he struggles, mm-hmm. you're going to have a bad time, man. And, and yeah, yeah. And you're like have, I said, you're going to have yeah. issues. Yeah, you, and you're going to have issues just like uh, in, in, in both of these games. If you, if you really think about it, you know, uh, somebody has he got to get a rhythm. You know, I think uh, Texas and them never got a rhythm, and uh, LSU got a rhythm late. Uh, you see what I'm saying? And so, yeah. And then I can also bag into the Florida State. Florida State caught a rhythm late. You got to get the ball into your playmakers' hands. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? To me, to me, that's coaching. That's coaching. I'm not gonna put if I see how the game is going. You know what? Scrap the game plan. This is what we're doing right now. Whoever my playmaker is, get him the ball. Give him the ball in space. Let's clear side out so he can be one on one with whoever formations, and, and let's rock and roll. But Notre Dame did a phenomenal job. I mean, I could tell at the beginning I, of the game. I'll be honest with you guys. You know? I think Notre Dame has a really good shot of making the college football playoff with that this win. Their year. You look this at their, their schedule. Year. You look at their schedule. Like they'll be a favorite, I believe, in every game until the last game of the year. And that's USC, actually, Notre Dame and USC. I believe it is at USC well, this time. And I'll say this about the whole Notre Dame thing, too. I think they found themselves a really quarterback favorite in the backfield, Jeremiah yeah. Love. 
Yeah. Um, Jeremiah Love was really crucial down the stretch um, against Texas A&M and, and, and uh, in Aggieland College Station Saturday. I felt like he made some big plays and some big runs when they when they really needed it. I agree with you. All right, I'm going to get to a topic here. I don't want to stick around on this one too long, but y'all, when you see it, you're going to want to talk about it. All right, you ready, Jason? John, there you go. Ah. <laughs> well, All I, right. I took my watch off. I took my watch off. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we got to get to Colorado. They played North Dakota State. They hung on, got the win for Coach Prime in Colorado at home. North Dakota State is the number two ranked FCS team in the country. They are a legit title contender in the FCS. But they go up to play Colorado, FBS, and they come in, you know, and the Buffs do get the win. And I just want to know what are y'all's thoughts on the game and where this program is at, I guess. Uh, I thought it. Go ahead, John. If you want to speak, go ahead. I mean, I still think their defense is not great compared to like, like it's still not the best. It's it's a work in progress. I think but I do it's, think Colorado did a better job of of scheduling their first game against a team or worthy opponent uh, to let them see their flaws, you know. All Shadur Sanders did was get the ball in his playmaker's hands. Easier said I mean, Travis does. Hunter looks great. And I'm going to be honest with you, I know that Shadur gets all the pub, but I'm going to tell you right now, I think Travis Hunter's the best player on the team. I mean, uh, I mean, by far, anybody that can go both ways. Yeah, I mean, he's the best player on the team. Yeah, he's the best player, the best athlete, the best player on the team. That's not, but Shador is just the one who's delivering the ball. He has to put the ball there. But like you say, um, but Colorado, yeah, their defense, I said they're watching the game that this this particular team was going to not be afraid, not be afraid. You already said it. The oh, they, they definitely was they're not. battle tested. They win. And so yeah. instead of coming in and, and playing a – a, 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 a Jackson State or a a, a, a SWAT school, what right. better way to play a team that yeah. is going to come in here and try to punch you in the mouth? Well, and, 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 and now they, they got all week long because, to, you know, to fix some stuff, you know? Yeah, but yeah, because because they go to Nebraska, and right. Nebraska is waiting on them, and that's yeah. going to be a good one, too. It is going to be a good one. Um, You know, season-wise, Jason, we ain't had you on. I mean, where do you think Colorado – I? I honestly, I think they're about a 500 team. I really don't think that they'll be I would a whole love lot to see, of that. I think you're right. I'd love to see them over 500 go to a bowl. That, that'll be a win yeah. for Colorado. You I know, think it have, will be too. Absolutely. Yeah. If he yeah, can get to a bowl game this year. We can say, because we love, I don't know about everybody, else, because you, I love Prime. I love just everything he's about. You know, he's he, he he's trying to talk his way up and uh, speak up for his players. He's getting all the celebrities to come down to see him. They're watching. He's a master manipulator of the media, right? He's going to say everything he's supposed to say, and he's going to he gonna bring in artists. It's a whole show up there, but at best, 75. At best, to me. I'll say, I'll say this, too. Um, while I expect him to be 500, I don't expect them to win Saturday at Nebraska. Nebraska's an improved football team. Um, I, don't quarterback. Know, I, don't quarterback well. watch, I don't know if many people watched him Saturday, but the Rash is a really improved football team. They got Patrick mm-hmm. Mahomes at, as quarterback. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> wait a second. <laughs> good Pretty good quarterback. Pretty good quarterback. <laughs> hey, are you sure that's not Patrick Mahomes? It might be. That's, it might be. Man. That's all I want to say. Are you we sure? We will see. We, we, we will see if – Colorado has been no, in. no. I'm just talking about the way he looks. Did you see oh, some oh. comparison? Well, he, he, he's a good quarterback too. What I'm saying is the Colorado defense. But he's got is, the little goatee. He has the glasses, <laughs> just like he does. I mean, he's got the haircut. I mean, seriously, he looks identical to Patrick Mahomes. We're gonna get a good <laughs> view of him this Saturday. <laughs> I just talk about the way he looks. I think he does it on purpose. He wears number 15. Why red. not? Why I'm not? Because- Why not? Why not? Why? Hey, I, I would love to be compared to 
one of the all time <laughs> greats already. <laughs> That's why I was making fun. Is it you know they got Patrick Mahomes? I mean, look yeah. at him. Yeah. I mean, yeah. <laughs> all right, so we're gonna get to our pick six segments here, guys. Heisman worthy performances from week mm. one. Uh, we're not gonna talk about our picks for Heisman yet. I think it's a little early, but Heisman worthy performances. Give me two or three that you guys want to talk about. Mm. Um, I'll go. Uh, my first one would be Ashton Genty, the game he had against uh, is it Georgia Southern. Um, yeah, I thought he six just six TDs, two hundred and sixty-seven yards. He had yep. a really good night. Um, Jackson Dart had a big game, threw for four hundred eighteen yards and five touchdowns. Um, I thought he played really well. Um, I think. One that nobody really wants to talk about is Will Howard um, for Ohio State. I thought he played really well. Um, he threw for 228 yards and three touchdowns. Um, Jeremiah Smith is as good as advertised for Ohio State. Um, you know, he had, I think, six catches maybe and two touchdowns. I can't remember. But um, Ohio State will be in the mix this year too. So those are my three top performances um, of the week. I think so, Josh. Wasn't LSU, uh, Florida, and A&M the only losses in the SEC? I'm going to go with, like what you said, the young man uh, out of Boise State, Ash and Gentry, who has and Gentry. And 67 yards rushing, man. Yeah, six TDs. With, man, I'm going to go with the kid. Uh, I'm, I can't say his first name, but Mick – McMillan, McMillan, the wide receiver, Absolutely. put up a monstrous 304 yards. Yeah, man, put up four TDs. You know, Absolutely, yeah, man. I'm going also. I'm also give uh uh my my, my uh, guy out of North Texas, uh, uh Damon Ward. He had 230 yards. You yeah. know, uh, I think uh you got to say something about Travis Hunter. You know, he uh. Had Travis Hunter had a great day. Playing yeah, both ways. Playing. Um, he played. He played 115 of 116 snaps, and the only snap that he did not play for the entire game was because his helmet came off. Man, that that that, that says a <laughs> lot. That says that, that says yeah. a whole lot. I, I have to get Shadur Sanders. You know, I had to give him some love too. He threw for 445 yards. As I'm looking, I think who else played man, was. Nico E. L. Maliava uh for Tennessee. Um, I said well. it, right? he did he did play well. He did um, play well. I thought, you know, some of the some some of the throws, some of the throws that he made. Um, you know, what's the what's the guy's name that played at Georgia for a while? Um, the quarterback, uh the Stafford? Murray guy. The the Mur no Murray. Uh what was his first name? I can't. I know you're Andy. Was it Andy? No, it wasn't Andy. Um, That's a golfer or tennis or something. I can't think. But he was he was doing some film breakdown um, of Nico, and he was showing some of the tight fits that he was throwing the ball in. Like some of the 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 fenders was was in great position, but Nico yeah. got it out. And he and he did put either it right one of y'all on. say? Did either one of y'all say Cam Ward? No. Nah. I, I did say I, Cam. Moore. I started to say Cam Moore. I thought he played really I well. I thought I thought Cam played really well as well for Miami. So just wanted to throw his name out as well. He did but, play well. You got to give him his props too. He had yeah. a hell of a game. He had a hell Aaron, of a game. Mur Aaron, Mur Aaron Murray is his name. I could Aaron. I, I, I was close with an A. I couldn't, I couldn't yeah. remember. Yeah, his first I was name, close. But, I couldn't remember uh, either. Yeah, he was just breaking down Phil and Nico, and I thought it was pretty neat. Right. Some of the throws. Oh, I mean, he absolutely did play well as well. So, I mean, I just had to throw out some Heisman worthy performances there. Cam Ward, Cam Ward to me would be up there with Ashton um, Genty from Boise State. Like he, he just went into the swamp and he just literally put a stamp and, on. It. And like by the end of the game, like they were in hush mode at the swamp. I mean, they were like, like it was, and you don't well, never see that. I was headed to the exit, so. Yeah, yeah, they got a bite of them, man. Miami. Yeah. Sure. All right. So, sure. most impressive week one, Z, Z, week zero, week one, most impressive performance or team or whatever you want to talk about here. Most impressive. Boston I'm going to go with Boston College. Boston, Boston College, College uh, 
got it, got it, Boston College, man. I, I was not All expecting right. that. I was expecting them to come in and compete, but I was not come, expecting them to dominate, dominate in Tallahassee. I, I wasn't expecting it at all. I'm going to say say one that most people probably won't thank God. They played a horrible team, but I thought it was Auburn. And, and I say this because I say this because last year they struggled with teams like this, and they they finally got some playmakers offensively. Cam Coleman, um, the Lambert kid from from Penn State. We'll find out a little bit more about them this well, week playing well, California. They play, yeah, they play California Saturday, but yeah. I just felt like, you know, I thought Peyton Thorne played really well. Um, in a game a year ago, he didn't have the confidence that he had Saturday that he normally has against those kind of teams. And I felt that that was impressive to me that he showed a little bit better command in the pocket and whatnot. And I thought Auburn did a really good job of um, – Getting him, getting him out to the receivers and, and showing out down there at Jordan Hay. All right. I didn't put it up just yet when I started this, but this is part of my the good, the bad, and the ugly. So most impressive is part of that. Jason, did you say all of yours? I know you said Boston College. Did the you good, have any more or, or performances? I think the bad, the bad has got to be um, LSU, LSU. Uh, I don't like the way that they they let it go. You know, I'm gonna say LSU and Texas and them. So I'm hard on the um, I'm hard on the SEC. You know, we SEC is is the top conference in America, in my opinion. Uh, but uh, like I said, the ugly everybody know the, the ugly is gonna go down there in Tallahassee. You know, it 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 got to get cleaned up, and I can throw Florida in the in the, in the bad too. Those three teams out of the SEC did not look good, even though it's week one. They did not look good at all. Right. You know, I agree with you. Um, I appreciate you. So, all right. Thank you Jason, for being Jason, on. Jason. Yeah, Jason said he's got to go, and I appreciate you. I just want you to know that I appreciate you being on with us, man. You know, I got we'll you see, guys. We'll see you I'll next see, Tuesday night, I'll okay? See you next Tuesday road, night. All right. Okay. all right, man. That was Jason Harrison. He is part of our team. He's a busy man and got family and kids and everything else and works and coaches. He, he's a uh, AAU basketball coach as well. I will so, I will put out there with the whole good, bad, and ugly, that another part of the good would be Vanderbilt. Um, my bad would be probably LSU. Um, and my ugly – I know this is going to sound kind of different, but everybody probably thinks, oh, it's FSU. It's not. It's Virginia Tech. And I say this because Virginia Tech was was projected to be top four ACC. You know, they was picked pretty high up in the ACC. And I'm not saying nothing bad about Vanderbilt. That's not what I, I – congrats to Vanderbilt. But that's a game that you needed to win right out of the gate. And I felt like they, they just couldn't get it done. That there were so many mistakes that they they just had. Like even on the last play in overtime, there was a little. I don't know if you watched the last play when he threw in the double coverage. He had ample room to run and get a first down, and he just threw the ball away. Yeah, and I'm thinking. I mean, I don't think if you're talking here the good, the bad, and the ugly over the over week zero and week one, I don't think you can talk about anything else as ugly except for FSU. Well, I mean, now, I think that's I there was like, some bad. There was some bad that you might throw in there that's a little different, but the ugly's got to be FSU. I mean, let's let's be honest. They were a preseason top ten team. They were the favorite preseason favorite to win the ACC. Guys, Georgia Tech and Boston College are both in the ACC. This is two conference games. They have started 0-2 in the ACC. I mean, for a top 10 team who is supposed to win the conference, and they've got that kind of talent there, like Jason said, getting blown off the line, having those, you know, NFL guys, potential NFL guys playing like that, that's a problem. 
that's a big issue. So I don't think you can go anywhere else but Florida State for the ugly. Now, the bad, you know, you can talk about Brian Kelly and LSU. You can talk about Texas A&M. Um, you know, there's different ones that you can talk about here um, when it comes to the bad. So I'll let well, you continue. Well, I think, you know, with the whole ugly thing, I mean, I feel like that's – I put it FSU in that same regard. But I felt like, you know, with Virginia Tech, I just felt like that's a game you just can't lose. And – it just it was just it's just very disappointing to to see that result Saturday. Um, Josh, I'm still holding out. You're talking about Kentucky here. I mean, you know, we we didn't play a great team. We had all the delays. We really only played a little bit over a half. I, I'm just not ready to say that I was impressed or not impressed or or whatever. I think we still have a ways to go to see that for Kentucky. Um, this week will be a big step towards that. I think if, um, they can take care of business at home and by taking care of business, I mean, not a one score game here. I mean, I'm talking taking care of business at home against a team that will be towards the bottom of the SEC when the season is all said. I mean, I'll be honest with you. I, I, we haven't talked about Kentucky much tonight, but. I'll just kind of say this and we'll move on to our whatever our next topic. But you can't struggle Saturday with a team that just barely went by and beat ODU. And, and that's no disrespect to Old Dominion because Old Dominion's had some good to beat Virginia Tech before. But you cannot struggle with a team that. I mean, honestly, I, I, I truly. I feel like, John, this game Saturday against South Carolina should be a, at a minimum, should be a 14 to 21 point game. Yeah, it should be over by the third quarter at least. least. Well, you know, the third quarter at least. Yeah, I mean, I I really do. So, I mean, they're not, they were in the middle somewhere. They're not the most impressive and they're definitely not a disappointment. I mean, they shut out them with all the stuff that was going on. And well, the delays I mean, and everything well, you else. Had all the, so, you had all the, like you said, the delays. You yeah. had, and then you had another delay, and then nobody know what was really going. Like it was, Stoops even said he said it was the strangest thing he's ever seen while he's been coaching yep. football. He's never was. seen something like it in his life. So. It was, it was a crazy night. If you're a Kentucky fan, so I'm just not ready to say whether or not I Brad, think that they're. Brad, Brad calls me Saturday night, and he says, "Let's just play ball." <laughs> I mean, it was it was it was a nuts night to be honest with you. But you know, I mean, I was glad that we got in some football. I, you know, I think it's bad for stats to be honest with you, season stats and everything um, to end it the way that they did. You know, but uh, we'll see. I mean, I do think it's bad for stats. I really do. All right. So the last thing, John, before we go off that I kind of want to talk about here is I want to talk about a little bit about next week. So I'm going to call this part of our final buzzer Mm -hmm. and we'll talk a little bit about next week and some matchups that you are looking forward to. I'll give you a couple of mine right off the top that I'm looking forward to. NC State is a tough team to play on the road in their house. They rarely lose games at home. Look it up. Well, I, I mean, even, even, even Clemson, I mean, they, you know, I'm not saying that they win all of them, but I'm telling you, they rarely lose games at home. And Tennessee goes to NC State Saturday and they're an eight point favorite right now. I looked it up earlier today. Actually, actually it's at Charlotte. But oh is it? It said yeah, on the thing it, it said at NC State. No, it's a, it's at Charlotte. It's a neutral shot game. Ah uh, well then that makes it a diff- that makes it different. Yeah but still it's in that area where North Carolina State's at though. But that makes it they, – they're tough at home now, I'm telling you. They're tough at home. Yeah, they are. They're tough at home. Well, 
on the on DraftKings, it said at NC State. It didn't say it was a neutral site game. Well, it's a, it's a neutral site. It's at Charlotte. Um, I, think okay. I think it's being played at the Carolina Panthers um, home stadium. And then the other game that I want to talk about right off the bat, and then you can kind of go through a list for yourself, is Nebraska-Colorado. I really think that's going to be a fun game to watch um, with the uh, quarterback – with Sanders and Rayola. Is that how you say his name? Uh, Rayola. Um, the guy I was making fun of that is Patrick Mahomes reincarnated, <laughs> even though he's still here. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but anyway, uh, just he's playing the impression of Patrick Mahomes. But I really feel like those two games are going to be fun to watch this week. It will. Um I just got maybe two or three. I was going kind of down through here, and um, I like the Colorado Nebraska game. I, I'm kind of interested to see how Clemson rebounds against a, a pretty decent Appalachian State team. Now, I'm not saying that's kind that, of a tricky game there. Yeah, I'm App not State. saying that App State's going to go in there and win because you know that Valley is a tough place to play. But that should be interesting to see how Clemson kind of rebounds against from the Georgia loss. Um, I'll tell you a team a nut game real quick. That's going to be off the radar. That I think ever that would be a, a good game is UTSA and yeah, Texas State. Texas State, yeah. That should be a, a good game as well. And another good game that it will be Boise State and Oregon. I think Ash and Genty will will give Oregon some fits running yep. the ball. Um, they got the offense now. Um, and my other two would probably be Georgia Tech and Syracuse. Georgia Tech has a chance to go three and zero here. They do. Uh, they, really got, uh, they got a chance to really put a dent in this ACC race, like if, if they could go into Syracuse and win. Yeah. Um, and I'll say, let's see. I was kind of going that. I'm going to say Michigan and Texas is the other one. Like, that should be a fun game. And I'm not so sure Michigan wins this game. I'm not either, to be honest. I, 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 I'm, Leaning towards picking Texas, I'm not going to say. I'm because, not going to say. I'm not going to give my pick away. But now, I'm leaning. I'm leaning towards picking. I Texas. I say that because I know Texas kind of did their thing with Colorado State, and and this is a different kind of um, level of competition that they're going up against this week. But Michigan struggled with Fresno State Saturday. It took what an uh, interception towards the end to really put the game away. Like they was having, they was having some. Well, they won thirty to ten, but they scored seventeen points in the fourth quarter. Yeah, like it was it was a struggle to win that game, and, and yeah, and I'm going to tell you, if quarterback play don't get no better, Michigan's going to have two or three losses on the on their docket by the four of the years out. Yep, I mean I agree with you hundred percent. Uh, I think it's going to be a tough thing, game. Uh, there's another thing I want to kind of move on with here is. You know how sometimes these spreads they kind of move and they kind of so yep. Kentucky Kentucky was a six point favorite over South Carolina. Um, I guess it was this, Monday. Was it Monday morning? Sunday Monday morning, morning I think, it's early when it opened. And today yeah. it's almost up to ten, ten and a half points. Ten earlier on DraftKings. It was what? It was ten. Yeah, well, it was ten and a half earlier on um, Circus Sports. So. I think that's a high move in the in the last twenty four hours. Like it's, yeah, it's pre, it's pretty now, high move. Back. Matchups to look forward to as a Kentucky fan. I'm just going to tell you guys, I I don't have the standard that I'm going to be okay with a loss here against against South Carolina. I don't have that standard. Um, this is a not good team. This will not be a top five or ten team. Um, in the even 10 in the SEC. I'm not talking about overall. I'm I mean in the post. SEC. I made a post, was it today? And some Tennessee fan had commented on it and said, because it was like the spreads and whatnot, and somebody said South Carolina, somebody had mentioned something, and the Tennessee fan said South Carolina won't even score on Kentucky. And they the shouldn't. Way, I mean, I'm not saying that at well, all. I'm, I don't know if it'll be a shutout, but I'm going to tell you right now, they shouldn't score over 13, over 10, 13 well, points. Well, their offense, they if you shouldn't. watch them against 
ODU, their off their offensive line was absolutely atrocious. Yeah. And and, and our defensive like, line is really good. So and, and this should be a game that work. should be over by the end of the third, to be quite honest with you, for an SEC game. That's what I feel like. So I mean I, I'll just be honest with you. I watched parts and pieces of Kentucky. Everybody's kind of judging Brock on some of the, the parts that when he first started, and, and that's that's unfair to that guy because he looked really well towards the, the second part in the second quarter, third quarter until the game was called. Um, it's his first start. Like, you're going to have, you know, nervousness. You're going to have jitters where you don't play very well right out of the gate. And I think people are kind of um, getting a little bit too much slack. Well, well, I mean, I'm just telling you my standard for this for this, for this game is lights out. I'm telling you, I don't have any other thought. This this cannot be. We've lost to them two years in a row, losing to a bad teams. And I'm telling you right now, that's got to stop. I don't I I don't have that standard here at Kentucky. I'm not going to be okay with that. Well, front, and I will let forward. you guys know on our post game show on Saturday. If if it goes otherwise, well, Jonathan, me and you have two different ideas of it because this South Carolina team is not really good, and I'm not just saying that. Like, if you've watched them play Saturday, and let's that's say not, that's not a if if that's your ex expectations as a fan with a team that's not very good. I mean, I I don't even know what to say to that. I mean, honestly, that's 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 accepting a standard that is just not. It's it, it's just not right. I mean, you can't do that as a fan, if you ask me. Well, but if you expect South Carolina to go from week one to week two, which they're going to improve, I'm not saying that. I'm saying they're, they're, it's I don't know. I just don't. This think is a game that if you're a coach and your team. And the SEC, this is a game that you can not lose at home. No. Do you understand what I'm telling you? You no. can no. not, under no circumstance, I don't give a crap if you throw picks or I don't give a crap if I don't I don't care what goes on, you cannot be okay with and you can not lose this game. At home. Now, if this was in Columbia, South Carolina, like last year, it would be a different story. I, I would understand, you know, if Brock went to South Carolina and he struggled in, in, a, in a game down the road. But if it was in Columbia, it'd be a different story. You cannot lose this game at home. I don't think so, Jonathan. He's He says if Stoop loses, he'll be on the hot seat. I just don't think that's true. I mean, I don't. I mean, yeah, it's a, it's not a real. Great. I'm not so sure. I'm not so sure about it. But I, I, I'll, I'll leave it at that. I mean, honestly, I'm that stubborn about it. This is. I'm not even going to entertain anything else. No. This is a game that you cannot, under any circumstance. No, you, you can't lose this game. This is a home game well, because against a bottom tier team. But and if you win this game, you got a possibility of game day maybe coming to Lexington for Georgia. Yep, absolutely. And, and that helps recruit. You want some positive buzz? You want some people to give NIL money and all that kind of stuff? These are the kind of standards that you have to attain, not have. Attain. You have to attain them. Have to win them, yeah. So that's where I'm at. I'm just gonna be <laughs> I love here. when Brad gets on his little his little rants. <laughs> I just let him. I just let him go, man. He just goes. I'm just telling you, plain and simple. I just let him go. See, Jerry, right, we, guys. Have, we have a good catch. I just let him go whenever he wants to go, man. Hey, it's called the big fuss for a reason. Sometimes I like to fuss. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh goodness all right see guys i hope you guys enjoyed the big fuss show i hope you enjoy enjoyed that jason was here with us tonight for the first hour 
I appreciate him being on with us and giving his insights um, and and kind of mixing things up for us. Oh, Brad, I got to say something. I still don't like the 49ers, Jerry, just so you know. Well, know, I'm a Packers it. fan, so I don't like – like the 49ers either, the Jerry. Oh, and he but just said, right. by the way, John, go 49ers. <laughs> <laughs> I knew that was coming. I'm a Packers fan, so, you know, I don't like the 49ers either. So, you know, I mean, honestly, not at all. Well, I, heard, I, heard you like, I heard you like Joe Montana. Ugh. I remember him. God, I, I, uh, no, not at all. <laughs> oh, not man. at all. All right, before we run off here, home field apparel, 180, over 180 collegiate teams. Go check them out. Use our code CSCAST. If you're a first-time buyer, they've got really cool retro logos, mascots, and throwback teams. We are now on uh, the Real Fresh channel on YouTube and on WSB and TV channel 30. You can find us on Roku TV, Apple TV, Fire TV, through the BoxCast app and look up World Sports Broadcasting Network. And then you can find us on Channel 30. So I want to say all of that. And we appreciate you guys being with us to end the don't, show here. Carlton, don't give him the big head. He said, I think the Packers will be good tough this year. <laughs> to end the show here. I'm trying to get this to go on and this to go off, but it. Thanks, Jerry. All right. There it is on the bottom. All right. Follow College Sportscast on Facebook, YouTube, TikTok, Instagram. And then those are our Twitter handles. The, so real, the, on, real, the real JH Sports. If you are on Twitter, you can find us at those Twitter handles or. You can also go to Greenville Sports Media, and I do a lot of writing this week. You can go there. Um, yesterday on Monday, I put out my college football playoff rankings for College Sportscast, um, and you can check them out. Click, click, and click the articles. Um, we would love to have you on the website clicking and reading our articles. So go to GreenvilleSportsMedia.com. Website. All right, that is it. I appreciate everybody. Go Pack Go. <laughs> All right, and we will see you guys Friday night for our game day pick'ems. Go Cowboys. Y'all have, have a good one. Go Cowboys. <laughs>